Hello, my name is Usama Naga. We'll discuss in this section some updates in general pediatrics. My objectives in this presentation is to discuss most recent updates in introduction of solid foods in infants and a brief discussion on feeding high allergic foods. I'm happy to let you know that the second edition of the Pediatric Board Study Guide is under publication. We are more than 53 authors from different universities in the United States working on the second edition. We added new chapters to the previous edition and we made a lot of updates in all book chapters with more illustration, uh, more tables uh, and more clinical case scenarios. I will discuss here the current American Academy of Pediatric Allergy Prevention Recommendations and the European Society of Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology and Nutrition Recommendation on complementary food between four and six months. Now the timing for uh, solid foods introduction uh, uh, has been changed from uh, six months to four to six months. So the previous recommendation to start the solids from six months and now the current recommendation by American Academy of Pediatrics is to start uh, solid foods between four and six months. In order to introduce uh, solid uh, foods in infants, the infant has to be at least at least four months and developmentally ready and we'll discuss that in the next few slides. It is a very important question to ask, is the baby ready for solids? Make sure that the baby doesn't have any type of hypotonia no, and the baby is having adequate trunkal control, uh, good head control, and usually babies they achieve good head control without head lags by four months of age, able to propel pureed foods to the posterior pharynx for swallowing, extinction or disappearance of extrusion reflex. Babies less than four months of age, if you uh, apply anything in their tongue, they will expel it or they will uh, spit it out. This usually disappears or become less when they are four to six months of age, meaning that they are ready to feed solids. Other signs indicating that the baby is ready for solids are putting their hands in their mouth, bringing their toys to their mouths, and exploring different ways of mouthing these uh, toys or objects. Also, another uh, clue for babies if they are ready, if they indicate a desire for food by opening their mouth and leaning forward or the opposite when they are satisfied by leaning backward and uh, turning away. This is usually achieved by five to six months of age. It is critical to emphasize with parents that solid foods should not be started before four months of age. Nothing but milk, no water, nothing, nothing but milk. The reason behind uh, the change in timing of solid foods introduction, that uh, introduction or early introduction between four and six months may decrease the risk of allergy to that specific food. And the studies also showed that delaying solid foods after six months may increase the risk of allergies. How to introduce solid foods? Single ingredient foods should be introduced first. Avoid giving multiple items together. How to introduce solid foods? American Academy of Pediatrics recommended to offer first infant cereals and pureed meats. This will provide the infant with good amount of iron and zinc. At least one feeding per day should contain foods rich in vitamin C to promote iron absorption. Infants in general, less than one year, you should not restrict the fat and cholesterol. So no fat or cholesterol restrictions in the first year of life. When to start high allergenic foods between four and six months? If the infant tolerated few less allergenic complementary foods, for example, rice, cereal, pureed fruits, or vegetables. The most common highly allergenic foods, this include yogurt, eggs, soy, wheat, peanut, tree nuts, shellfish, and fish. How to introduce uh, high allergenic foods to high risk infants should be gradually and carefully introduced to asymptomatic high risk infants without prior testing, as long as they tolerated vegetables, fruits, uh, and pureed meat with no problem. 
it is important to be careful uh, before introduction or recommendation of introduction of solid foods to make sure the infant doesn't have calcitrant moderate to severe atopic dermatitis despite the optimal management which is severe eczema very hard to treat uh, signs or symptoms of an immediate allergic reaction while breastfeeding or with introduction of any food especially one of the highly allergenic foods uh, in these cases in these cases, you have to do allergy evaluation, detailed history, family history, possible testing by referring to an allergist or ordering IgA level for a specific food, for example, peanut IgA level before introduction of highly allergenic food in these cases or a very high risk infants. I will give here a few examples about a high allergenic food introduction to be able to practice. If we have a four months old infant with no history of calcitrant, moderate to severe atopic dermatitis, no history of atopic dermatitis, no family history of atopic dermatitis, no suspected or confirmed IgE mediated food allergies, the infant tolerated already cereals, the fruits and vegetables. What to do next? The next step is to introduce peanut at home anytime after four months of age if developmentally ready make sure that antihistamine or oral antihistamine is available another example if you have a four months old infant with no history of calcitrant or difficult to treat moderate to severe atopic dermatitis but there is a history of mild to moderate atopic dermatitis Next step, you may suggest to introduce peanut at home and make sure the antihistamine or oral antihistamine is available. Or if the parents are concerned or yourself, if you are concerned about peanut allergy, order peanut allergy test or refer to an allergist. Another case scenario, if you have a four months old infant with history of calcitrant, very difficult to treat moderate to severe atopic dermatitis. In this case, very important to refer to an allergist or order allergy tests by ordering peanut uh, IgE level. General recommendations about introduction of solid foods in infants. It is very important to know that addition of sugar or salt is discouraged, especially in the first year of life. How to advance a solid food, a single food item. For example, start with rice cereal for three to five days. Then if the infant is okay with rice cereal, start a pureed meat for another three to five days and so on. When to combine? Combination foods, for example, fruits, vegetables, and meat after the child tolerates the individual components. If the infant is able to sit independently and able to grasp food with his or her hands, in this case, thicker purees and soft meshed foods can be introduced. Breastfeeding recommendation. American Academy of Pediatrics breastfeeding recommendation is to continue breastfeeding for one year or longer, as long as mutually desired by mother and infant, even if it's longer than two years. It is important to discourage formula or breastfeeding at night after four months of age. Infants should be trained to sleep all night without feeding from four months. This will help to prevent tooth decays in the future. Foods to be avoided in the first year. This is just a reminder. Canned food is high in salt and sugar, should be avoided in the first year. No juices in the first year. It is high in sugar and can cause dental caries. Hot dogs, nuts, especially peanuts, grapes, raisins, raw carrots, popcorn, and round candies. This is high risk of choking. Honey, corn syrup should be avoided in the first year because of a risk of botulism. Unmodified cow's milk should be avoided in infants less than one year or less than 12 months because this can cause iron deficiency anemia and increased renal solute load. The next videos will be what is new in pediatrics. See the references below the video. This is the end of this presentation. Thank you for listening. This video is only for educational purposes and not intended to direct the care of any specific patient. Please consult your physician or the physician of your child for the correct diagnosis and the proper treatment. None of my videos can be superior or an alternative for the opinion of an experienced and licensed healthcare professional. Thank you again.